Wes Miller here with Bomb Squad Racing. Want to give you my race report from this year's California 300. We're racing the Maxis Polaris Racing Pro R4 Razor. Went out on Thursday, did the poker run. The race took place, the main pit area was in Barstow, Maine. So that's uh, an area we do a lot of suspension testing. And uh, interestingly enough, I actually started racing in that area in a series called the ARA back in September 83 was my first race there on a 185S. So no suspension, um, definitely earned our miles there. It's kind of crazy because you look back and the beginners, I think, raced 20 miles which when I was 13 years old seemed like a long way and now is like nothing. I, and then the experts, I think, did two laps. So there they were going a whole 40 miles. Uh, it's, it's, it's funny to look back at it with a different perspective now, I guess, when you know I've done 500,000 mile races. So uh, anyways, we did the poker run. And I, I like the course. It, it's rough. It's technical. There was a lot of rocks. Kind of felt like tires could be a, a little bit of an issue or just flats, um, as well as tearing up the car. So I felt like this was a race where there's going to be a lot of attrition and you're going to have to be smart, take care of the car, push, but not not too hard so friday got prepped saturday we lined up for the race i had gavin rodriguez was co-driving with me again and a, a lot of my normal pit crew the way they laid out the race it was an 81 mile loop and you had a remote pit out by slash x ranch and then the main pit was right at barstow main there we planned on fueling on the end of the second lap and you know, it was gonna be a four lap race and then we just had like spare tires and some spare parts out at the remote pit when we got ready to line up for the race so the way they were doing the start order they had they were doing it by class but they did qualifying on friday they didn't have my class qualify i was in pure 100 production the, I was the only guy in my class, so there really was no reason to. And they were going to be starting me. They were going to have the Pro R classes that they have. They've got a couple. Then the Pro Turbos. And then it was going to be me. And then the Unlimiteds and NAs after that. Well, we line up to start. It's supposed to be a 10 a.m. start literally at 10 a.m. as we're supposed to be starting the race all of a sudden they start shuffling things around and, and they're moving cars and so finally I talked to an official and I'm like hey what's going on here and he told me that they were changing the start order now and it was going to be everyone that qualified was going to start ahead of anyone that didn't qualify so now that moved me from 26 or from 15th to 26th in the start order and put a lot of slower cars ahead of me so i went and talked to the race officials said hey you know what, what's going on here why are you changing things at the last second and you know, basically they just said that some people had complained, I guess, and that, that they had done this in the past, you know, and uh, I guess my argument was, well, if you were going to do this, then you should have let me qualify. That way I can start where I qualified and not be behind slower vehicles. That said, you know, the Barstow course, there's a lot of lines there, so I felt like I could kind of work my way through. It just always concerns me when you're in traffic with dust is you've got to take risks and to make the passes, especially closing through the dust. And in a, a course like this where it's really rocky, it's, it just makes it a little bit sketchy because you, you could tag a rock and get a flat. So we took off. 
and had a, a good pace going Go. in the first we are off. I'd say 20 miles we passed five cars and the other thing was prior to me starting everybody that qualified right they started in two minute intervals and then after that it was one minute intervals so I had everyone was closer behind me and then I had everyone spread out a little bit further ahead which there's pros and cons to kind of both of that but so the the fifth car I had passed in 20 miles he had started 10 minutes in front of me so that we were making pretty good time but as we passed the fifth car right away I felt something was kind of getting weird with the steering on the car and we realized we had a flat front tire so we pulled over we fixed that uh, got going again but we were probably say race mile 25 at, at the most so now i knew that we didn't we had used our spare tire that we carry on the car so we didn't have another spare tire i knew i had to get it to the next pit to get a fresh tire you know and then i could kind of pick up the pace from there so we were going decent but i didn't feel like i was pushing by any means probably around race mile 30 to 35 i guess we got another flat i felt the it, it, i think it happened pretty quick because i just felt the right rear of the car starting to sag you could tell with the steering that there was an issue but we didn't have another tire so the next pit was that slash x remote pit where we did have a tire was at race mile 46 How and far do we have to i knew we were going to have to drive on it and try to make 30. it to that pit without the tire coming apart uh we made it to you were like race mile 36 something like that not not real far the whole tire came apart and came off the wheel so i knew that we weren't going to make it the rest of the way so we pulled over there was an area where we're really close to the pit and so we hopped out i had my co-driver run to the pit go grab a tire and roll it back in the meantime i jacked the car up and took the spare or the the flat tire off of the car basically it was a wheel at this point with the beadlock stuck in the beadlock um, like how far is it? Six miles. at that point though i noticed so, that while we were driving on the flat the that off. a flap of the tire as we were spinning had come around and hit the upper radius rod and folded the upper radius rod our spare radius rods and axles and everything were at the main pit we radioed them told them to bring it to the remote pit in the meantime, the plan was for us to limp around and get to the pit. And hopefully the parts would be there when we got there. I was kind of concerned because the radius rod literally was about cracked in half. There was one little piece of metal on it holding it together. So that was going to be iffy. So I had to like really cruise slow, like basically try to not have the tires leave the ground. So we lost a fair amount of time doing that. But we, we got, uh, actually what was funny too is a, a lap, or as we were doing that, a, an, another vehicle came up and passed us and he puts a siren on. I'm pulling to the side and he rams us. So I'm like, dude, I, you can tell my rear tire is at like a 45 degree angle. I'm going 25 miles an hour on the course and I'm pulling over to let you by and you ram into me. Like I uh, thought that was kind of a bonehead move on that person's part. But we later saw them with a corner ripped off of their car. We got to the pit. Our parts weren't there yet. So there was a, another Razor team that was pitted right next to us. And they actually had an axle and a radius rod. So they were nice enough to let lend us those. We got, got it fixed. The other issue that we had was the axle, the outer CV had melted from driving on the flat tire 
because it had gotten so hot. So we had to replace the axle too. So we did an axle radius rod, put uh, a fresh tire in the rack as well as uh, on the right rear. And we got going again. At this point, the leaders had caught us and we had gone a lap down. So Braden Baker had gone by. Apparently Sierra Romo had to. I, I, I didn't see her, but we were working on the car. So it was very possible. And then right as we got going, the team of Joe Tirana and Cowboy Cerrone were, were they were kind of right behind us. So we took off. I knew like, okay, at this point, let's just get it to the finish. So we had a, a decent pace going, but by no means was I pushing it. Tirana got by me. He was going pretty good. And I, I could see Braden Baker's dust kind of out a ways ahead of us. We're just kind of cruising along. Ended up finishing that lap. Started our second lap. You know, everything was going pretty uneventful. I was really focused on no more flats, no more, basically no more time out of the car. Because we had had probably over an hour of downtime with everything that we had dealt with to that point. On the second lap, we ended up catching back up to the Toronto Cerrone car. Uh, I think they put Cowboy behind the wheel and I talked to him later. He said that basically they had such a big lead over everybody else that they just decided to kind of back it down and play it safe uh, and get the Pro Turbo win as well as I, I think they got the triple crown win too, I believe. Really uneventful second lap. We were then heard over the radio that they were shortening the race because I think the race was taking longer than they thought and the BLM, what I understand, didn't want them racing at night. There were some razors and spectators and stuff kind of out on the course. And I think that kind of created some issues for the promoters. We messaged the, we had cell service most places out on the course. We texted the promoters, said, hey, what's going on? We're lapped down. Are we gonna do two laps or three? Because we need to fuel if we're gonna keep going and we're not gonna fuel if we're not. We finally got the word that they were gonna stop us at two laps, so we didn't fuel, came into the finish, and ended up doing two laps instead of the three that they had cut the race short to. In hindsight, I think if we would have done three, because we ended up like 21st overall is where they scored us, I think we would have ended up like 15th or something like that. It. Uh, you know, wasn't where we wanted to be. I kind of had the goal of, I wanted to try to crack the top five in a production pro R. I think we were probably pretty close to being on pace for that. Gotta have a clean race to, to have a, a top finish. We are gonna clean the car up, getting ready in the next couple days. We're going on a camping trip with the pro R. So one of the things that's really cool about our race car is it's also my play car and uh, I'm going to go check out the Eclipse. I'll be posting some stuff with that. Then the following week, we are going to be racing the Legacy Gold Rush Virginia City to Tonopah race in the exact same car. So kind of have like back-to-back -back weeks of camping, racing, camping, racing, which is pretty cool. I think uh, most people aren't doing that with their, their race cars, uh, which I think really kind of shows how cool it is that you can go be competitive in a relatively stock car and then still go have fun in it. So, you know, any of you guys that are on the fence about racing, it, it can be done because I've been doing it all year. Anyways, thank you guys for following us and we will keep you posted as more events come down the road.